That's right, bitches. Welcome to another installment of Faces for Radio. I am DJ Weed, and of course, joining me as always is the world famous Robert Suma. World famous, what the hell is up, buddy? Just um, trying to figure out what the fuck is going on in Lost. <laughs> trying to put together the pieces like everyone else. Uh, you, uh, <laughs> you, you, in, you informed me that you were on the forums a little bit today yeah. and uh, told me about some interesting theories. And, and that's, oh, what I, yeah. that's what's so great about this season, that's to be I quite like. honest with you, is that the, the theories and sort of the holes are getting filled in. And, and then new uh, holes are opening up. Well, that is true. But and, I feel like we've got more answers than not. And I was a little, uh, Survivor was a little underwhelming last night. Yeah, but Jonathan went home. But, uh, I wasn't happy you know, about that. It, bro. it was cool, but, uh, you know, the strongness of Big Brother and last week's Survivor, it's, it's hard to live up to that. Yeah, well, dude, last week's Survivor was freaking epic, dude. No, and Big epic. Brother. And Big Brother, my amazing. God, people. Amazing. If you it's are not reality season. TV fans, then you are fucking missing out on some like, great, great television, like some I tell great everyone, entertainment. Big Brother is the reality show's reality show. Like, if you like reality shows, then, like, that is the pure, pure reality show as far as game, you know, people in a confined space for a long period of time. I mean, I love it. I did actually Big Brother is the one reality show that I would absolutely love to be on. Every other reality show I want to host. But Big Brother is the show I want to be I on. I definitely want to be on Big and Brother. And I wouldn't mind hosting Big Brother either because personally Julie I Chen. think Julie Chen oh, is not only God. the fucking ugliest Asian woman on the on the she's planet. Horrid. But she's all I mean, dude, have you seen her face lately? No, I haven't seen How haven't much seen fucking plastic is required to make I can't stand it when I did that. The home on this on this browser like fires uh -oh. up eighty freaking windows. Got so. a uh, Hogan, if you're listening, an ATI VPU recover box just came up. That's pretty hot. That probably I have no idea if that affects our recording uh. or uh, or why that <laughs> came up. But uh, it seems that we have to tell uh, ATI Technologies about this problem. You got to tell ATI. I'm looking up Julie <laughs> Chen. Julie Chen. Let's see if I can. Oh my God! See, you know, like every once in a while, she actually looks kind of. She actually looks kind of good. But then, but then she shows up, and I'm Julie Chen, and welcome, to Big Brother. And I'm just like, God, dying a fire. She's not very good on her feet, like when when little like problems happen. You're right. She's not. Yeah. She actually looks. She's kind no Jeff of, Probst. She, she looks kind of trying. decent in this picture. She's no Jeff Probst. Right here, um, but. Uh, Do you know what this is about? Uh. Uh, there we go. That one right there. She uh, but look bad. She doesn't she looks look like bad a there. She looks like she might have. She some does. She looks like hanging. a lady boy. You're at, that's what it is, dude. Yeah. All this time of trying to figure out what it is about her, and you're absolutely right. It's the fact that she just looks like a lady boy. I'm glad that I finally figured out the uh, mystery. So there you go, Julie Chen. What do we got for you guys today? Well, we've got a couple different things. We're going to start off the show talking to a couple of guys who just competed in the Ace Combat Six tournament. That, of course, was run and uh, implemented and admin and all that stuff by GGL. I had a chance to go out to New York uh, about two weeks ago, so I think jealous. it was, and talk to uh, – well, I got to see these guys play. I commentated the finals. But I uh, wanted to bring these guys on because partially we've had some users call in and, and, and want to learn more about some of the tournaments. You know, we've got an upcoming Frontlines tournament. We've got a Don, Don of War uh, Soulstorm tournament. We've got a Rainbow Six Vegas 2 tournament coming on soon. And all of these are going to feature televised finals uh, with Gameplay HD and, and with, like, the commentary of DJ Wheat and friends. And uh, so we, I thought I'd bring on not only the one of the winners of the show uh, or of the tournament, uh, Suma, but also Airwolf, who is by far, in my opinion, one of the best Ace Combat 6 players I've ever met. And, uh, and you know, this guy's like littering the leaderboards on Xbox Live. And, and uh, he's now become a, a GGL admin after having played uh, in this tournament. So we're going to talk a little bit with those guys, but uh, many of you are excited for the uh, feature of Will <laughs> from the WeCast uh, coming on the show. And, yeah. you know, first and foremost, I just want to put out there is that anyone who is willing to accept an invitation, I think automatically deserves a little bit of props. It's not hard to uh, watch previous episodes of, of Epileptic Gaming or Faces for Radio and, and have an idea as, to, as far as what it is. 
And, um, you know, he's been on the forums. I think he's sort of checked things out. And, and this all came from an interesting story that, ha- that happened probably like about a week and a half ago. We're not going to get in that yet. We're going to wait uh, until we, we bring Will on, and we're going to tell that story about how all this came to be. So first and foremost, uh, let me bring this up over here. Uh, there, is a, there is, of course, one of these tournaments, uh, ac6.ggl.com. And uh, so basically... Well, oh, that didn't work. I, I'm, I'm. Uh, how about Ace Combat Six at ggl.com. Dot ggl.com. Uh, that would be it, I believe. Um, and by the way, that was Cami playing Rainbow Six Vegas Two prior to the show, and uh, I think she's going to probably be playing it continued into the show. Uh, at least I don't mind. Uh, but here we go. The Ace Combat Six Fires the Liberation. Uh, Thirty thousand dollars in cash and prizes was given away, and of course, the televised finals took place in New York. It's already aired on Gameplay HD and. I think you're going to be able to check out some clips on our site very soon um, about that. Yeah, they're supposed to be putting together uh, stuff from the finals and everything. Yeah, so I'm not sure these guys are supposed to play in a battle royale for an additional uh, prize purse, and I'm not sure if that has actually happened yet. Uh, But the goal is is that we're going to bring on, first and foremost, the winner or one half of the winner um, for Ace Combat 6. And, you know, it's, it's always enjoyable for me. When I get to cast guys that have unusual gamer tags, well, I'm sure you've seen your, your I've, fair share of gamer tags. I've seen my fair share of gamer <laughs> I tags. Can only in imagine fact, some I, of the I mean, keep ones. this keep this in mind, Suma. Is that like <laughs> when I casted Quake Three, I wouldn't just cast U.S. Quake Three. I would cast Russian Quake Three, you know, Polish Quake Three. And there's one name in particular. Can I have the whiteboard? Can, uh, no, the reason why is because Donkey I have to, I have to actually write it so that that you guys can understand this. But I'm gonna show you. Do you remember how it's spelled? Oh yeah, dude. No, yeah. Uh, I don't understand how your brain works. I think this is. <laughs> it's like okay. Filled with. The I most think this is it, right? Ever. I think it, it, and any no Quake cab? players, or maybe it's no it or BAP or something like that, bap, right? Bap. Russian, okay. Bap. It's pronounced Povar. <laughs> I'm not shitting you. I'm not shitting you. Um, it's pronounced McDonald's. It's pronounced Povar. <laughs> and uh, I think that's right. Any 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 Quake 3 fans and, out and there? And we let the let the God, American gamers know how uh, those Russians play FPS cuz I always thought this was interesting. Oh yeah, the Russians play with keyboards on their laps. That's their style. Yeah, I was watching uh that old video of you from the Quake days, and one of the players had the the keyboard on his lap, or you couldn't yeah, see what the it keyboard is. was. Like, where, where the hell's his keyboard? <laughs> I wasn't sure. It is N O B A P, and it was actually it was actually written like this: N O B A P, and and there you go, right there. And people, uh, I when I cast it, no of course, bap. I'm like, no bap, no bap, no bap goes with red armor. No bap grabs a rocket launcher. No bap just frag blah blah blah. And I would have Russians. Messaging me on a, on a second basis saying it's pronounced Povar. Dumbass. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Unprofessional. Anyway. Uh, there's there's a couple other ones, but I won't go into that right now. We're going to bring on I, – I, the, the reason I was getting to that is because Adam Wheeler uh, is one half of the team that won the Ace Combat 6 Finals. He goes by the name Shartstains. <laughs> so you can imagine oh how awesome Lord. it was being like, Shark State swoops in from the 6 o'clock position and, and people, owns his opponent. People wonder why programming can't take Oh, look at this. They've even got it on a YouTube <laughs> video. Shit stains. It says Povar. <laughs> no bap. I never understood that one, dude. Guy was a great player, though. He really was. So we're going to bring on Shark Stains first and foremost. <laughs> Dude, I love it, man, and and uh, he's I a think really my gamer cool tag guy. Be cunt puncher. Uh, cunt sign. puncher. Yeah. If I ever uh, let's see. Enter the phone number that we want to call. Okay, let's do this right here. Um, eight one eight one seven four. Wow. Why don't you just give his whole? Home well, phone I didn't give out his whole freaking. Can I tell an interesting number. story while you dial up? Um, sure. Uh, I was uh, I had a PR call this morning and. Uh, Found out that there was this guy that developed this uh, anti-spam technology where when you got spammed, it would email the spammer right back. Right. And the Russians didn't like that very much. So they threatened his family, and he had to move and change his whole business plan because of the Russians threatening to kill him for his anti-spam technology that was so wow. effective. 
Yeah. That it, so, it's so interesting that Shart Stains is listening to the Hello. show and not hey, Shart Stains. Hey, how's it going? It's going good, man. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. This is uh, Adam Wheeler, guys, uh, joining us on Faces for Radio. He goes by the tag Shart Stains, and you actually messaged I me. Used to. Oh, you used to because you got reported. Is this true? <laughs> Some fucker did something. Microsoft, <laughs> Microsoft don't like shark stains. Dude, I, come on. There they is, don't like the word shark at all anymore. <laughs> there's got to be worse names out there than shark stains. I mean, come on. And yet little eight-year-olds no, continue to it's, like call you fags. It's kind of like, hey, you know what? It's kind of like it reminds me, uh, Adam, it reminds me of one of the guys that works here in the office. He had a wow handle, and it was Yotsuna. And just, you know, Y-O-T-S-U-A or N-A, you know, and, and Yotsuna yeah. sounds, it sounds pretty Japanese, right? Well, he got his name forcefully <laughs> changed by Blizzard because it. backwards <laughs> it spells anus toy. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. you know, I, I mean, I guess that's, you'd... That's fucked up that somebody would even realize it. I, exactly. I mean, other than the person oh who made God. it. I thought the exact same thing, dude. I thought the exact same thing. So we brought Adam Wheeler on uh, for a little bit today just to talk about the Ace Combat 6 tournament. Uh, you know, the finals took place about two weeks ago. And, uh, you know, Adam, tell us just uh, first and foremost, I mean, when you picked up your copy of Ace Combat 6, did you ever think you would be, uh, you know, featured in a television? televised finals uh in new york you know i did and i didn't because before i even got it i knew the tournament was around but ah so you I were mean, you were preparing ahead of time really yeah but i had no partner lined up or anything like that i just basically running my mouth to my like my brother saying i'm gonna win it and and, that, but, and so tell us then about how you found your partner the boogeyman Oh my god! Basically, just playing online. Really? Just playing, and then all of a sudden, he goes, "Anybody playing in the tournament?" And I'm like, "Yeah, but I got no partner." He said the same thing. Damn. We had a couple matches together. We both pretty much sucked at the time. But and then you and then you basically that. went on to to win. Yeah, yeah. We were getting beat left and right. We just figured it out one day. Crazy. You know. Do you use the controller or we? Did they have the actually? Actual sticks? I, I can, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, now, Adam, you're you're uh, you use the controller, but your partner was the only one who used a flight stick. Is that correct? Yeah, that is right. I was surprised by that, though. I thought I thought everybody was going to be using them, but me, me too. You know. Yeah. So we uh, you you went through the stages, stage one, stage two. They told you they were going to fly out to New York. There were four teams. Two of them were military. Two of them were civilian. Did you ever think uh, that you would be taking home the gold uh, at that point? You know what? I didn't. I'm like I was kind of nervous. I wasn't scared about the uh, military teams. Well, you know, I can't say I didn't. I did, and I didn't. Well, I mean, but and and we're going to talk to Air. The team was the scariest of all of them. Who know? was? Which one? The civilian team. And and that was Airwolf, Air, Airwolf, Airwolf right? and, and D-Ray. D-Ray. Yeah. Um, and we're going to yeah. talk with Airwolf uh, in a little bit. Uh, who, he's now. Awesome. Uh, he's, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, tell us a little bit about the experience of, uh, you know, doing the filming for this at Gameplay HD and, uh, you know. Filming. Oh, my God. I've never been so scared in my life. <laughs> yeah, a little, uh, a little, uh, you know, camera intimidation or what? Yo, so bad. I thought I was going to be good around the cameras, you know. I thought uh, but everything's okay, but it wasn't. It's not an easy job, is it? It's not as it? easy as it looks, huh? You, no, no, it isn't. I mean, like, not I said o- to I mean, you a little you, you got a camera. You got a mm-hmm. camera shoved in your face, and you've got to like perform well in a video game at the same time. It's definitely not oh, easy. Yeah. Plus, so, the circumstances. You just, I just won money, and they're asking me questions. I don't even know what to think myself yet. You know? <laughs> now, did you guys play the battle royale? Because you guys won the tournament. I think you guys split like eight grand, right? Yeah, we split eight thousand. And then, and then, wasn't there also some sort of like a, a, a battle royale that was supposed to take place between all eight competitors for an additional amount of money? Yeah, we're still waiting to do it. We okay. got all kinds of issues going on with that. Like, a bunch of stuff isn't happening right. Everybody's Scheduling issues. Trying and stuff to do like it, that. but I got gotcha. you. Nothing's working out right. You know I got gotcha. you. I mean? 
So let uh, so now that you've actually won this Ace Combat Six tournament, do you see yourself actually you know picking up Front Lines or picking up Rainbow Six Vegas or or any of these other games and uh, you know trying to uh, repeat your victory? You know, I played Front Lines and I wanted to do it, but the game just wasn't there for me. You know, yeah, it's just you can't form a party and go in and play in a party and all that crap. So it's like it. I, I gave it as much of a chance as I could, but what about a uh, game that comes on GGL that I can can actually play and enjoy? I plan on doing it again. You'll be right there. So, are you and Boogeyman still playing at all? Oh yeah, yeah, we play. And uh, I mean, are you pretty much just playing Ace Combat Six, or what else are you playing these days? I play Call of Duty a lot. I play Ace Combat Six. Me and the Boogeyman play it. That's about it. I play it when he's playing it, you know. And you just rape newbies? Pretty much. Yeah. Well We you know. we make a room with us against fourteen other kids. <laughs> and then you just annihilate them. Yeah, it's Good kind game. of fun. It's like our name, Annihilation, you know? Yes, exactly. So uh, if you just joined us here on Faces for Radio, we got Adam Wheeler, uh, a.k.a. Shart Stains. Or what What was the new alias you're going by? I mean, personally, I like Shart Stains, but... I loved Shart Stains. Now it's Dumar. I'm trying to figure out something to top off Shart Stains. <laughs> Dumar? How about, how about brand. Swamp Donkey? Ooh. How about Swamp Butt? I, give you, I may give that a... I give you permission I got, to use Swamp Donkey. I got a donkey. friend that's named Hot Swamp Ass. I be my... I, I grade my pubes, all kinds of shit, you know. Hot swamp so, ass. I, I remember a, hearing about that one. <laughs> this is odd. I got to keep it going. You That's know? you do have to keep it going once you've committed to shark stains, dude. Oh, all right. I love it. All Just right. temporary till I can top shark stains off. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, Adam, just uh, tell me how you're gonna spend that cash, dude. Uh, I got Boys. a baby coming, so it's all really. Oh, well, yep. Too bad you can't buy time with that money because you're going to need more of that. Oh, uh, I hear. I, I could tell you from experience, brother. Weed has plenty of babies. Oh, yeah. yeah, I have seven kids actually. <laughs> I don't know if I told you in New York. <laughs> oh, seven kids. I don't know how you even got to New York with seven kids. I, dude, I had two put of them. In a cage. Yeah, I had two of them in my suitcase. You just put them in a cage and. You no, know, I've just got one kid, one. and that's that's awesome. plenty for me right now. So, Adam, uh, I, again, I just want to say congratulations. It was great meeting you guys out there. Um, you know, oh, I yeah, look, I, good, yeah. I definitely look forward to uh, you know more tournaments, and I hope I see the good old shart stains, you know, <laughs> fragging away. <laughs> Uh, whatever the you know, whatever the newest game so is. So that I always find that funny. But <laughs> dude, it's awesome. Dude. I know. And, like I said, like I told you, Sue, I'm like, dude, there was something gratifying about you know, being short like, stage. Short stage comes from the left, and oh my god, what a beautiful interception as he takes him down. Short stains from behind. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, Adam. Congratulations once again, Adam Wheeler. One half of Team Annihilation, aka Short Stains. And uh, walked right. away with four thousand dollars at the Ace Combat Six tournament. It was great talking to you, bro. And uh, thanks for you know taking time out of your uh, very very busy Ace Combat Six schedule to come on the show for a little oh, bit. Oh yeah. All right, man. Hey, it was fun. All right, take care, bro. We really appreciate it. All right. Peace. I'll talk to you. Ta ta. Shard stains. The one and only. Our ratings. We had a ratings banana nah, during Shark he, uh, Let me tell you something about him. Let me tell you something about Adam Wheeler. He dude. sounds cool. He's well, that, very that cool. That guy just, we just talked to. He's really super cool. laid back. It, well, camera was like, dude, was he, what, you know, was, <laughs> was there a little bit of. <laughs> Yo, no, was, was I got a little, kid on the way down. No, no, it wasn't. It, 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 that was not the case at all. He was just like super laid back guy. Definitely, you know, carried himself with some humor and, uh. You know, I mean, it, he's kind of like what I sort of, he's like a real gamer, you know. He's just like, he, he he took it seriously, but at the same time, he was constantly having fun with it, you know. And uh, I, I appreciate that. And, and uh, you know, I, I I think that's, I can honor that. That's pretty cool. We got 10 minutes to Will. All right. Uh, that's just enough time to uh, bring on our second Ace Combat 6 guest. This is Mike McFadden. Um, and uh, Airwolf has a little bit different story. Because be happy. Air Don't worry. Be happy now. And uh, so McFadden, come on. Oh. 80s no, that joke, was right? Bobby McFerrin. Oh. You fucking idiot. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, my God. Close enough. Close enough. <laughs> Mike. 
Mike. <laughs> uh, well, I think we have Mike. Oh Mike. My God. Hey, guys. Whew. Numa Weed, what's up? Yo, what's up, dude? How's it going, bro? Um, uh, just listening to my Bobby McFerrin. <laughs> <laughs> Not Bobby McFadden, as uh, Suma uh, so terribly put it. I was wondering why the hell he was singing that song. And suddenly then he uh, says, you know, Bobby McFadden. It's like, you moron. <laughs> What's up, dude? Uh, uh, we just got done talking to Shard Stains a little bit, the winner of the Ace Combat 6 tournament. Who owned and, you? Uh, he owned you. Uh, hey, hey. Destroyed you. Like being on your screen flash up, you got shot down by Shard Stains. <laughs> <laughs> it, it can't be like the most satisfying thing to see ever. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, Airwolf, you, or Mike, I don't know, uh, which, whatever you want me to call you. Uh, I'm gonna, whatever. I'm just going to say Airwolf. Loser. Um, uh, so, you know, Airwolf has a little bit different story. Airwolf, I was sort of pimping you out before. You, you've got, like, these massive leaderboard uh, sort of achievements on Xbox Live uh, for many different stages. And uh, you guys came into the tournament definitely as, uh, you know, one of the favorites. Didn't, didn't quite do, I think, as, as well as you guys would have wanted to. But uh, you've sort of come out of this not only having gotten to experience the tournament itself and the whole televised thing, but you've actually now become an admin. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah, the uh, GGL just taken off like crazy. So want to get out and get in on the most ground floor I can. You know, a bunch of great guys. So, so uh, do you are you going to be admining any of the uh, upcoming tournaments like Frontlines or Rainbow Six or? I, no, I haven't gotten my assignment yet. It's not all drug, sex, and rock and roll. It's been listing win loss ratio so far for the boss <laughs> but, uh, yeah yeah you got to work your way up to the drug sex and rock dude and roll. it's you know what i'm 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 glad he said that though airwolf because a lot of people think it is just drug sex and rock and roll but you know like being an admin there's a certain level of commitment and a certain level of dedication that you know you're you're offering to uh to the site and to the community that uses the site a lot of people think it's just all you know fun and games but it certainly isn't it's it's some it's some hard work and yeah, i definitely Sex, drugs, and rock and roll uh, next week. <laughs> so then it'll it'll be coming it'll be coming very Great. soon. So, dude, I want to ask you kind of some of the same questions. You know, first and foremost, did you ever think when you picked up your copy of Ace Combat Six that you would actually be, you know, featured on a televised finals on Gameplay HD? Uh, I never thought it, it'd go that far, but I, you know, since Air Combat on PS One, I've been a Ace Combat whore basically. So <clears throat> I've been hitting one one two three four five and then now now six which is by far the best and i was hoping when i saw that competition come up but you know never dreamed i would get that far well uh you you not only made it to uh you know not only made it through the first and second brackets but got to that live televised finals what was it like sort of uh all of a sudden hopping on a sound stage having to play you know these uh the, these military teams and and of course the civilian team and you know in Is front of the true? lights they camera military action teams? yeah the, i didn't know that yeah i'll, I'll, like let, I'll let airwolf uh, explain Wait, how, how it worked exactly actual pilots well i'll let airwolf oh, explain right. it right. we had one we had one uh pilot in study basically his name is the inevitable hero but oh, wow. the uh, most military guys were reserve guys but uh like like shard stains was trying to was starting to say the military guys uh it seems like the civilian side of the bracket was the real finals between annihilation aces and the 13 fighter squadron both of both of those teams in the ace combat uh community really felt that the winner of the winner of that was going to go ahead and take it all so if you could have you know if you could have done it like any differently do you think that there could have been a better format for like the way that the finals or do you think that because it was split into like military groups and civilian groups that it sort of had to play out that way uh we we were kind of talking about that here we we've been royal rumbling it up since the since the competition and <laughs> also anticipating this one to ever if we ever get it fucking done it'd be nice but uh let me basically I'm sorry, I lost you guys there. Oh, that's okay. We're right. We're still here. Got my Xbox headset headset plugged in. <laughs> <laughs> that explains so, a lot. But... He got a headset ring of death. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Xbox <laughs> headset issues. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> So you, you you definitely you, you definitely think that that civilian game well that's the civilian match between you know 13th and, and annihilation was definitely one of my favorites of all, of the whole tournament um, and uh, are there different maps or is it all just sky? Other ones, but we you know ours was 
uh, one kill basically determined the winner. And yeah, all. exactly, exactly. And uh, 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 the maps were, were, were pretty spread out. I mean, the way it worked is it was just kind of a confined area. How can there be maps? It's all just the sky. Is there, like, a different cloud? Yeah, I think that all that came into play. Oh, okay. Like yeah. it's cloudy yeah. in one and it's there's, not... there's a couple of levels that have higher mountains and clouds at a lower level. Oh, okay. Some high, but, you know, once you get up to the level that, that Shark Saints, Boogeyman, and the rest of us were playing, it's like one big shitstorm in the middle of the level. <laughs> That's Basically awesome. Basically like a big old circle of missiles and qualms and how, people dodge and missiles. But... How, how accurate is Ace Combat 2 in relation to, like, flight, you know, pretty strict flight simulators and things like that? Oh, it's... <laughs> it's not accurate at all. You're pulling, you're pulling high G maneuvers that would rip the wings off. <laughs> that, so, that doesn't you know, surprise me. The photorealism of the graphics, though, is is incredible. It's probably one of the best graphics game I've ever seen, and uh, you got to really hand it to the dev team uh, to put that game together. It, I think they use the Japanese satellite imagery system to do yes. some stuff. It's it's amazing. Yeah. The game, uh, the game really does uh, look phenomenal, uh, even in stills and, and especially in motion. Uh, just seen some really cool, you know, imagery and some of the games that I watched while I was out there were just phenomenal. Uh, you know, so I got, a, I got a story about that dev team. It's pretty funny. You're bringing up the, the leaderboards and whatnot. Yeah. And I, we got to meet the dev team, and that was definitely one of the coolest parts about the trip. I love and that. I'm telling them, oh, I'm. I'm number one on the Battle Royale leaderboard, map number two. And, you know, they're like, oh, very good, very good. And then they're speaking in Japanese. I bet they were saying, let's not tell him. We do update on Tuesday and reset the leaderboard on it right after we left. Are you serious? So they really did. Oh, my God. I bet you that's exactly what he was saying, too. <laughs> Stupid American. Oh, Stupid American. American. We reset leaderboards on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> so great. That's awesome. He played 50 one more fan? hours. Bye-bye. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, you can actually find Airwolf over on the GGL site. Head on over to GGL.com. Uh, now adminning a few things. I just added you to my friends the other day. So uh, thanks for the request. Uh, but we're going to see you around, aren't we, for uh, future GGL tournaments. Absolutely. In fact, I've got a couple teams in the front lines tournament, and we plan on putting a couple teams in the uh, Vegas tournament as well. Awesome. Good job. Awesome. All right, Thank dude. Shout out to my wingman D Ray out there. I'm sure he's listening right now. Yeah, D Ray uh, signed up to the site today. You can't you can't hide from me, D Ray. I was watching. So uh, yeah. Hey, well, you're in there. Approve my account. It's not working for some reason. What's not? <laughs> I registered for the website. Today. On EG or what? Yeah, man. All right, I'll I'll look into that yeah, after the show, bro. We switched to new form, so. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll uh, I'll look at that, bro. All right, Mike, not Mike McFerrin, Mike McFadden joining us on the show. Ooh, Airwolf, you can happy. find him adminning over at ggl.com, dude. Thanks so much for coming on, bro. Be happy. Now. My pleasure. All, All right, man. man. Peace out. Later. Bye bye. All right, that was uh, Adam Wheeler, a.k.a. Shard Stains, and Mike McFadden, a.k.a. Airwolf. And uh, you want to learn more information about these tournaments that uh, are being thrown? You know, the other nice thing, Suma, don't cost you a goddamn thing to join. You sign up, you make an account, you put your team together, you win fucking money. What was the Tecmo Super Bowl tournament that would have flown me to New York City? <laughs> I would have been all over that. Dog. I would have been all over that. Man, there are dudes out there that would fucking roll your ass. Dude, in Tecmo back in the day, Bowl. I was the Tecmo king. Yeah. I would have been number one. I'm sure in the you world. were the only one, dude. The I only was. one. Yeah, yeah. I I don't believe that. <laughs> uh, I would have rocked your ass. Are we uh, are we ready to bring Will on? Or? Yes, it's 4:30. Come on, call. 4:30. I've been waiting all month for this. It feels like. So first and foremost, let me uh, let me bring up uh, Will's uh, site. Yeah. Um, Will's site hmm. is uh, I'm bringing it up right now. It's uh, it's quite know. simply www.thewecast.com and uh, thewecast.com the yes. we thewecast.com. And I'm not sure if I can find the how uh, this was like two weeks ago, right? Two to three weeks ago, something like that. D was it that long ago, man? Oh, here we go. Epileptic Gaming calls the WeCast worst show on the internet. Update. Uh, uh, <laughs> now, now keep in mind, guys. <laughs> and how long is this clip? This clip is ten minutes. Do we know where this happens in uh, the clip? It's like five minutes in. 
Is maybe. it five minutes in? I th- maybe. <laughs> it's got rants. Speaking of the Wii, uh, oh, that's that's like said, it's being slow loud, So, yeah, yeah, I the first Plus, first I and foremost, I wondered why I wasn't on the couch, <laughs> and I was like, well, listen oh. to you cough. I think yeah. you were sick. Well, See, up that's why. That when a message. Around. I was I don't know sick. How many times yeah. I have to tell you, it looks yeah, like. Oh yeah, I video. sound like like. T- so of course it's the day that I'm not hosting the show that these guys decide to you know to call out uh, WeCast. I love your <laughs> escaping responsibility for any of for this notion. Whatever, dude. Oh wait, here we go. Here we go. Uh, we here we <laughs> go. Game videos does it every once in a while. So, game trailers is probably the biggest offender. Um, we've definitely parodied. Some of their other featured stuff. 24 minutes long. Do you want to show? It? No, we don't want to show the whole thing. So one Who of are the these biggest violators in my mind is WeCast. If you haven't Uh-oh. seen it, then please spare yourself and don't. <laughs> but this is proof of how shitty it is. Now this is like episode 60, or whatever. They profile it every single time on Game Trailer. Wow, his apartment. Wait, what? The? <laughs> wait, wait till it gets really. I don't know. He looks kind of big, dude. I don't know if I want to talk any smack about his dude. Did I miss some? Oh yeah, this is that guy. Yes. <laughs> so this is his special opening. It doesn't usually open this with the, with such quality. Wow, what vigor! You guys, dude, go. hold on, hold on, hold on. Opening. He's got a better intro than we do. Yeah, he does. Oh, way fucking wrong. <laughs> you know what? Dude, all we need is a fucking dog, and we need to fucking glue him to the ceiling. So we need just to all take right. a look at how. So I don't this even guy. remember ah, how man. old this was, um, but I do remember it happening. Um, this got a this got a beastly sixty six comments on his uh, on his site. Yeah. Um, as apparently people didn't quite like that uh, we we called out the weak ass. So well, you know how Nintendo. So are. Suma, explain to me how the interaction went that so, basically brought uh, yes. Will to the program today. So I mean, yeah, this clip. I uh, I at that time I had some frustrations about you know uh, EG and, and and people not recognizing it, and I sort of just took it all out on the weak cast, unfortunately. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, we saw this post. Random post like two weeks ago, this old moment from an old show. I mean, dude, of course, I'm LOLing because this shit is seriously like how old? Uh, this has got to be a year old, right? Something like that. And uh, and so, you know, I saw that people were upset and uh, I just wanted to explain myself to them. I was like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, I was definitely, you know, upset, took my frustration out and blah, blah, blah. And um, and then I went in the forums and in their forums and explained it again and everything. Um, and then uh, I saw that Will like uh, commented in there, and uh, I think I mentioned to you. I'm not sure if I just mentioned him. Like, hey, why don't we just bring him on Faces for Radio? Uh, you know, why don't we get the other perspective? You know, we're, yes, we're always bagging on the we. You know, and we always get hate mail that people say we're fucking we fanboys. So it's like well, you know, we, well, PS3 fan. I'm sorry yeah. that that we're we're we fucking fan haters. Yeah. I don't know. Like, so why not get the other perspective? Because you know, I am genuinely curious what people see in the Wii, and I'm sure you are as well. Because we don't, I don't see it as a as a you know old school Nintendo fan. I don't see what the appeal is with the Wii. So you know, I just wanted to get. Someone who does a show dedicated to the Wii, you know, why they love it so much. And, and, and Will seemed like a good person to bring on, little, you know, olive branch. So uh, Right, and now, now first and foremost, and, and I definitely don't blame Will for this, but he, he, he basically thought that we were just kind of trying to set him up. And that's not really, yeah. that's not the case at all. Yeah. You know, in, in my opinion, we finally get to have someone on who's sort of speaking and representing on behalf of the Wii community. And, um, you know, I I mean, we don't often get uh, really a stellar assortment of opinions on the show unless it comes from a caller. Because I'm sure as fuck not necessarily defending the Wii on a a daily basis. Maybe forces some sort of like a casual fan of the Wii anyway. Force? Yeah. Right. It just seems like he likes maybe two or three titles. You know, I want someone that. I mean, obviously, he must care a lot about the Wii that he does a weekly show dedicated to it and, and, you know, fosters this community of Wii lovers. So he's got to have some connection to it that that we just don't have. And, uh, of course, I I absolutely just would love to find out who was the guy that sent them this video. You know, like, I mean, again, because it's just so old. But, uh, yeah, so, guys, we're going to bring Will on. And we got a bunch of questions for him. In fact, uh, Suma was so nice uh, to print out a a bunch of questions right there. And uh, if we have any luck, 
we're going to let you guys call in and uh, ask questions with yeah. Will, too. But, you know, here's let me just say straight up, one of the things that I'm most curious about, and uh, it seems to be something that has sort of been, uh, re- uh, you know, I've realized it, Suma, lately uh, over the past month or so, is that I really, you know, that, that I was that hardcore, you know, Nintendo fan um, w- when I was younger, that yeah, that I would have I would have fucking fought bitches on the playground I because grew up on the you NES. know for someone trying to say that the Sega Genesis was better than the NES, well, you know that that would them would have been fighting words, you know. I think it was, and well, it certainly didn't have the library that it had. But anyway, uh, that's a, that's another argument for another time. You know, I am of the opinion that. I sort of feel like I have had brand loyalty since, you know, uh, since the original NES. You know, yeah, I I fucking owned Rob the Robot, you know. I actually used, I played Gyromite, bitches. I used Rob the Robot, you know. I oh played my. the shit out of Duck Hunt. I loved my light gun. I played, uh, you know, Gumshoe. Like, these were some of the greatest gaming Super moments. Scope. And now I feel like that's just, quite frankly, not being delivered anymore. So, you know, one of the things I'm really curious to find out from Will is what is his gaming background? You know, for all I know, the Wii is the first console Will's ever played. But that's one of the reasons why we're going to invite him on the show. Remember, you can find out more about Will's show on uh, www.theweecast.com. Right. But on game trailers. We'll let him uh, we'll let him tell us all this good information. Excuse me. Um, and I've got his phone number right here. Unlike the other douchebag websites that, you know, don't seem to want to pimp other people's stuff, I wonder we're if not afraid. Maybe Will will do, will, I don't know if, I don't think Will is associated in any way with Screw Attack, but I'd love to know. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, our top ten reasons why we're not around anymore. Yeah. Number so. one, we're complete <laughs> douchebags. Number one. <laughs> All right, uh, guys, let's bring Will from the WeCast on the program right now. That would be the day. Uh, if you've just joined us or if you are a new user, welcome to Epileptic Gaming's Faces for Radio. This is where we take the video out of Epileptic Your call Gaming. Your has been forwarded to an automatic voice message. Oh! 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 To page this person, press 5 now. Sorry. Try I again. I don't think Try anyone again. heard that. Try again. Will! What's up? This is DJ Weed. <laughs> You're shut. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, we'll try again. Peace. Um, try his Skype if you uh, if you yeah. can call again. Yeah, just try it. Well, he, he said he had problems earlier. True, but uh, might as well try add it. a contact. There we go. <laughs> and we found it right there. Add Skype contact. Don't worry. Be happy. And we're trying Don't worry. to Be happy now. get him. Did it add? Hello? Did it add? Don't worry. Okay. Dude, please stop. Now Be I'm going to find him. If I can. Don't worry. Be happy now. I can't find it now. You guys are terrible singers, by the way. Um, I believe. I don't think he's online. Expert. I'm going to. band would uh, disagree with you. <laughs> so. Give me a fucking break. Suck it. Shuck it long and shuck it hard. Give me a break. We're going to try this one more time, guys. GTA. GTA, 15 multiplayer modes. It's almost too many, dude. No. Well, Cops and Robbers is Oh, there we go. Up to 16-player multiplayer. Thank you for calling the WeCast not associated with Screw Attack. How can I help you? <laughs> Will. <laughs> What's up, brother? Wow, nice. nice. This is, uh, What's going on? This is DJ <laughs> nice Uh Great great to have you on the program, and uh, I guess you answered our first question right off the bat. Perfectly. So, uh, yeah. uh, dude, introduce yourself. I think everyone pretty much knows that you, you also run a video slash uh, audio podcast. It's called The WeCast, and they can find it at www thewecast.com but uh, tell us a little bit about how you got uh, started in all of this and then uh, and then let's wrap a little bit all right well it's uh, it's actually really simple it was back when you know the revolution was announced and it was just kind of I was on the the depths of the IGN uh, message board lobby um, which if you've ever been on it you can kind of you know what kind of community that is um, obviously very excited Nintendo fans and you know I just decided to start you know, subscribing to these magazines and, and gathering blog posts and everybody was, you know, getting these this crap information from all these blogs and just decided to do like a 10-minute weekly YouTube thing kind of condensing all the news um, about, at that time, the revolution 
um, into, hmm. you know, video. So that's kind of how it came about. So you, you started eventually... before it was even the Wii. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I started, I mean, one of, the, one of the first things that we, you know, profiled on the Wii cast, I mean, was, you know, it wasn't thinking to have a projector in it, you know. I mean, right, so, right. I mean we, the show's gone back. I mean, it's almost, you know, two years now or Was even it called more. the Revolution cast? Well, no, it wasn't <laughs> because it was just kind of, we were doing it with, like, Nintendo cast, and then we were doing uh, these, like, speculations about games that would be remade for the Wii, like Kid Icarus and stuff, and then right. when they announced the name, you know, it, it ended up being the Wii cast. So, let me ask you this. I mean, you know, I, I remember when the, Wii ca- or when the Wii was pretty much, you know, defined as the revolution, and I remember that E3 and, and yeah, you know, all the rumors that went around there. I mean, I, 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 and I'll be fairly blunt with my question, but when you, when you started this, uh, you know, when you started this and, and the focus was sort of the revolution and no one really knew w- w- what was in store for the next Nintendo console, you know, did you think that it was going to turn out the way that it has turned out now? And, of course, that may sound like it has a negative connotation to it because it does. Um, you know? yeah, yeah, no, I, com- I completely understand. I mean, I, I think we were all expecting something completely different. Uh, from the Wii when it was announced. I mean, we kept getting these, you know, cryptic quotations from, you know, Nintendo of Japan and America saying, you know, you will say wow with the graphics and things like that, which, of course, right. nobody said wow. Yeah, Perrin Kaplan. I remember Perrin Kaplan telling me, there's a Ferrari under this hood. <laughs> Don't worry. There's a Ferrari <laughs> under this hood. Matt Kassamassima. I'm not sure she was talking about the Wii. <gasps> To be honest, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, okay, this, this that's a good foundation. I, you know, what's most interesting to me, I think, is the history of someone in terms of their gaming lifestyle, how they grew up, etc. You look to be about our age, um, and I'm assuming that you. And, and if you heard my little antidote be- before, I was telling you know Suma that you know. One of the reasons why I have such a difficult time with what Nintendo is doing right now is because I feel like they've really gone away from their roots. And instead of growing up with the people that they basically supplied and supported games for uh, for years, they've almost like reset themselves and gone back to the beginning. So I'm curious to know, were you a big NES fan? Were you, you know, dropping bombs on the SNES and the N64 and et cetera, et cetera? Tell me a little bit about your Nintendo history. Well, you know, I, I'm 24 now, so I was fairly young when the first um, when the NES came out. I was a fan. I mean, we had it in our household. Um, it was purchased. We had a power pad, which my brother and I used religiously to cheat at track and field. Hell yeah, and, dude! And, I mean, you know, I mean, we we had all that stuff, you know. And I have to say that towards like kind of the early 90s and things, uh, because my parents bought me a Genesis, you know. It was one of those things you instantly become the Sega fanboy because, you know, you're a kid. That's what your parents buy. They can't afford to buy every system. Right. You know, and you've got to defend that to your friends because that's what you have, you know. And I have to say that after the regular, you know, the NES, I mean, I was Genesis, Saturn, Dreamcast fanboy all the way up until GameCube. Interesting. Interesting. So. I mean, I was definitely Dreamcast fanboy. Definitely loved uh, s- select titles on the Genesis, but uh, um, yeah, that's that. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like Summer was the more, uh, or Suma was the more hardcore Genesis. Yeah, guy I was. A, I, I was a big time Genesis, Sega CD. I was all about that. Uh, stuff. You know what? Honestly, guys, the reason why is because I fucking hated the color palette on the Genesis. It really sucked balls, and it was the it was the exception of some of the great titles that they had that made me, you know, want to play. Well, you, the, ha- those you also games hate Sonic, there, but I mean, well, yeah, that's <laughs> that's true too. But I just and it was so strange too because you know the the Sega Master System had a way better palette than the original NES. But it just didn't have, you know, the games, and and it was almost like vice versa the other way around. Um, all right, so you, you know, you had an NES background. You got into, uh, you know, you. Re- it sounds like you really got into Sega uh, fandom, which is which is cool. I, I I still think the Dreamcast is one of the greatest systems. I think the that most important part is that it's an hit. old school gamer, essentially. Right, exactly. Yeah. So you start uh, you start uh, doing this cast. And you have really been doing it now for about two years, and it's been all, uh, it's been pretty much all Wii based gaming. So, my question to you is, is, is the Wii the only system that sort of dominates your gaming time right now? No, you know, absolutely not. 
I've got to say that um, even, you know, I do the show about the Wii, and every week I pick up a Wii title to review, and I play through those titles and things like that. Obviously, none of them take me very long unless it's, you know, something like Fire Emblem or right. No More Heroes kind of took me a while. But I have to say, I mean, our household, um, we have two PlayStation 3s in our house. We've got a PlayStation I. We've got an Xbox 360 Elite. We've got um, two PSPs, wow. two DSs six gaming rigs, one dedicated to World of Warcraft. So, I mean, <laughs> we're all hardcore gamers. I mean, we have, you know, thousands of dollars of gaming equipment Damn. in our house between me and my two roommates. So, I mean, I have to say that the PlayStation 3 is taking up a lot of my gaming time right now only because I jumped on the bandwagon a little late and there's a lot for me to catch up on. You're forgiven for that. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, is, but, <laughs> Welcome to the but club. I got I to gotta ask, Will, and I'm asking in like the nicest way possible. You just told me you're surrounded by all of this fantastic, you know, whether it be the 360 or the PSP, which I seem to be playing the shit out of lately, the PS3, you know, your, your PC gaming rigs, etc. Like, do you ever go... Fuck, man, why am I doing my show about the Wii? I mean, do you, you know, like, it sounds like you have just as much enthusiasm about some of, you know, some of these other systems. Is it just that you've created sort of a community and a fan base and you want to keep that going and it's easier for you to manage? Or, you know what, like, throw it out there for you us. You know, I think it's, it's kind of difficult because, as you know, Nintendo fanboys are the most rabid fanboys on the planet. <laughs> well, except which, for this know, dickhead sitting right next to me. Oh, come, oh, come oh, on. Oh, dude, I've I seen some, nowhere, I've seen some rabid fanboys in my life, but no near, one takes the cake more than world-famous Robert mind. Suma. I'm sorry. I am nowhere near right. a Nintendo fanboy. My sorry, mind is Will. way more open than that. <laughs> you have got to All be right, kidding. Anyway, Get the anyway, fuck anyway. out of here. <laughs> you have got to be joking me. All right. Sorry, Will. I do... I have to say, I do, I do love my Wii. I love the, you know, I hate the shovelware that's put on it. I love it. Um, I do love doing the show about the Wii. I think the community that we've created with the Wii Cast is really great. One of the reasons why I keep it going, I mean, aside from the fact that, you know, it's a great system in my opinion, Ooh. is that, I mean, really, what other websites are profiling the Wii in a positive manner? I mean, All aside of them? from, say, like, Go Nintendo or Wii All Family of them? Dude, I so, mean, it's like the Iraq uh, War. Here, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Not, I'm, but, no, no, no. I'm not talking about... I'm not talking about old people in senior citizens center, you know, stories about them playing Wii Bowling. I'm because there's about, nothing like, to talk about. Which websites, <laughs> you know, are profiling the actual games and kind of, you know, we like to think that we tell it like it is. I mean, we're not kissing Nintendo's ass whatsoever. All right. You know? I mean, Donkey Kong Barrel Blast was one of the reviews that we... I mean, it was just a horrible game with a horrible review to match. I mean, really, it's just kind of putting that Wii mindset for people who want to learn about it without having, you know, kind of those snide remarks that you get from, say, like, 1-Up or you something. You know what? Or I do us. like that, though. <laughs> I, I, I would much prefer to see Nintendo, you know, fanboys go to a show that actually tells them the truth about the console. Like, hey, you know, I love the Wii, too, but here are the titles I like, and here are actual crap titles that you're getting butt-raped for. Like, I actually right. respect and, that sort of uh, approach. Yeah. And that's what we do. I mean, we have... Sometimes entire episodes dedicated to games that you should not buy, like those, you yeah, know, Billy good. the Wizard and Ninja Bread Man and things like that. I mean, right. I sit down and I play those games and I tell people, you know, don't put Ninja twenty dollars down for this. You know, get another twenty and get Resident Evil and Brother Chronicles instead. You know. I don't know about that one. I really wasn't a fan of that one. So, all right, let me go back. Let me rewind a little bit, Will. Um, you, you, and I want to go back to a quote that you just uh, that you just made, and it was pretty much, quite frankly, it's it's a great system. So I, I'd love to just hear because, of course, I've got my own little bag of arguments for why I think the system is just you know balls. Um, I'd love to hear first and foremost why you you know what do you appreciate about the Wii? You know, I consider based off of what you told us that you're fairly uh, old school gamer. Obviously, you have uh, n no lack of video game systems in your household. So, what is it about the Wii in comparison to the other next gen systems that that you like about it? Well, I think that you know it's not not to say that. I like the me I like the Wii, you know, a hundred times more than the other systems I own. But I mean, I I love the Wii for you know some of its different merits. I mean, it does. Obviously, the motion controls are hit and miss, you know. And I <laughs> I fully agree with people that say that that they are hit and miss. But I think that there are certain games and certain developers, namely Nintendo, who know how to use the motion sensor correctly and um, 
and I think it really adds to the experience of the game. Will, do you however, believe the motion? Okay, sorry. Go finish your finish your thought. I was just going to say, however, on the other side of the coin, you, you've got developers like Hudson and, and things like that who are pushing out shit like, um, you know, Bomberman Land, which is, you know, waggly mini games, which doesn't bring anything new to the system and doesn't, it doesn't represent what the system was created for, you know. So do you feel like Nintendo sort of ha is the only one really capitalizing and dominating on motion controls? Because, uh, well, answer the, you know, what do you, what do you think about that? I mean. Well, I, I, I do. I think our last episode, um, not this week, but the week before, I kind of did a, a, a skit bashing Nintendo about that. If you've ever seen Lost and you know they find the Dharma tapes and things like that, it's right. the entirety of that. And it was a secret Nintendo third-party developer instructional videotape <laughs> about how to make their games as shitty as possible <laughs> to make Nintendo nice. look funny. like the best developers. Right. You know, so I mean, <laughs> I think Nintendo, because they're only putting out, you know, two to three games a year at this point on the Wii, you know, they're really kind of nailing that control down rather than they've got this kind of mid-generation PlayStation 2-itis of, you know, shovelware, tons and tons of shovelware appearing, you know, on the Wii at the same time. And I think that people aren't giving themselves, developers aren't giving themselves enough time to really kind of kind of go in and, and see what the motion controls can really bring to the game. Now, and what do I, they I, bring? Hold, hold on, okay. because it, I, I, last night, for whatever reason, I fire on my PS3, and I, and I, a long time ago, I downloaded Loco Roco, the Loco Roco game that appeared on the PSN. And sure. I started playing it last night again and sort of, you know, for whatever reason. And I got to actually the final boss, right? And in the final boss, what happens is all the Loco Rocos that you've actually collected, they fire into this cannon. And suddenly you use the six axis controls to, like, aim. And then you, like, you, you shake it to shoot. And I'm actually playing this going, why the fuck is this better than most of the Wii like motion control based titles that I that I've played and I still you know I st I mean you're absolutely right Will I think that it's very hit and miss I think that Nintendo has a great grasp on at least how to utilize the motion controls to make it seem natural but it seems like third party developers are really failing on this my question I guess is is with the six axis controller and with some of these other companies starting to realize that they've sort of got a Nintendo Wii like motion control in this controller as well it concerns me that, well, it doesn't really concern me. I just feel like the Wii's no longer going to be u be able to utilize that as sort of a selling point because it seems like the other systems are adopting that. Like, do you see well, that happening? I, I, I think that the most important thing you have to consider here is market saturation, first of all. You need to understand that Nintendo's been pimping out their motion control since the beginning. I think the same the same thing you're seeing on Wii with the motion control is also happening on the PlayStation 3. I mean, for instance, Ratchet and Clank Tools of Destruction. I mean, going through that game, the motion control parts for me were so frustrating because they were so not, you know, working the way that I wanted them to. I mean, the skydiving is kind of clunky. The um, door hacking is, you know, unless you start the door hacking with the controller, you know, positioned just right, I mean, it gets really annoying. I think it's the same kind of case of, you know, Sony knows what they're doing with their own hardware. The third parties still aren't going to, you know, jump on the bandwagon right now. I see that maybe the PlayStation 3 will become a threat with no motion control. Um, right now, I would worry more about the iPhone and their motion control well, games cutting into Nintendo's market share. I, mean, I, right. I think I the problem with, with the Wii that. and the motion control and the, the control scheme in itself is that you know, they have staked the success and the, the, the good or bad of the games based on the motion control. I think it's a huge mistake, and I think it, you know, with Super Smash Brothers Brawl, they proved that you don't need motion control to play a fun game, right? You know, That's true, and I think, I think they did a really good thing with Smash Brothers in allowing you to have four different control types with infinite customizable controls. So then what's the point of having the Wii? Why... why why repackage a GameCube with internet access as a two hundred and fifty dollar system? I'll tell you what. All right. Uh, I, I'll tell you what. Will, hold on. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Will. We got to take a break, bro. Um, will, will you stay on the line with us, and we'll, we'll answer that question as soon as we come back.
All right, is that cool? All right, all right guys. Uh, sorry about that. Didn't mean to uh, break up the uh, the the discussion. Uh, so far, it's it's been fantastic. Will, yeah. you're uh, awesome. you're a great guest. Um, we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we're gonna have more Will from the WeCast on EG's Faces for Radio. So guys, don't go anywhere. We promise you, we will be right back. All right, peace. <laughs> 